Coming up on Network Africa. Zimbabwe's newly appointed ministers take oath of office. Plus thousands of Burundian and Congolese refugees in Tanzania's camps face shelter crisis. And later, Kenyan opposition figure faces incitement charges. It's good to have you on the program. I am BC Adebayo. Let's begin with a look at stories that made headlines over the weekend. Zimbabwe's new president, Ima Sinanagwa, has replaced two ministers two days after announcing his cabinet. Critics said the original lineup showed Mr. Nanagwa had no plans to bring real change to the country, despite hailing a new democracy. The education and labor ministers have now been replaced, ostensibly to comply with the constitutional provision. But military chiefs remain in charge of the foreign affairs and land portfolios. The former Egyptian Prime Minister Ahmed Shafiq has given a phone interview on live television, denying reports that he was kidnapped. Mr. Shafiq's family had voiced fears of foul play, saying they were unable to contact him after he landed in Egypt. He was deported from the United Arab Emirates on Saturday after five years in exile. The deportation came after Mr. Shafiq stated his intention to run for the presidency of Egypt in 2018. He said on television he was now reconsidering the plan. Finally in Somalia, where authorities say 512 people have been killed after a lorry bomb attack in the capital Mogadishu. The number had been initially put at 358. In the attack, a truck bomb exploded outside a busy hotel on a street filled with government offices, restaurants and kiosks. Security agents found another minibus in the city's Medina district packed with explosives later in the day and it was detonated in a controlled explosion with no casualties. Zimbabwe is still very much in the news as newly appointed cabinet ministers have taken their oath of office in the country's state house despite criticism over the controversial appointment of senior military officials to top posts in what they was widely seen as a reward for the army's role in the removal of Robert Mugabe. The new president, Emerson Mungagwa, brought back Patrick Chinamasa as finance minister despite his various records in that post previously. Major General Subasisa Moyo was made foreign minister and Air Marshal Perrin's Shiri was given the sensitive land portfolio. Mungagwa, who was sworn in over a week ago, dropped allies of Mugabe's wife Grace, but brought back many Mugabe loyalists from the ruling ZANU-PF party, disappointing those who had been expecting a break with the past. And in the Democratic Republic of Congo, protesters are demanding that Joseph Kabila stand down as president. An international campaign group says the authorities of the country recruited members of a former rebel group to quash opposition protests last year. The Human Rights Watch estimates more than 200 former fighters from the M23 group were ordered to use lethal force against demonstrators. More than 60 people were killed in last year's protests against President Joseph Kabila's decision to stay in power after his mandate expired. There has been no word so far from the Congolese authorities. Elections are now scheduled for December 2018, and that's more than two years after the expiry of Mr. Kabila's two-term mandate. And South Sudan has removed fuel subsidies in a move many government officials attribute to scarcity of head currencies. A new site reports that it's a directive from the president's office. A senior official at the government-run National Oil Company was quoted as saying that money has been depleted in the Treasury. The Deputy Finance Minister, Ambrose Thick, says ending the fuel subsidies would free up desperately needed cash. The country was, uh, has not paid its civil servants for months and its embassies are facing closure for unpaid rents. And elsewhere, thousands of Burundian and Congolese refugees are living in dire conditions in camps in Tanzania because of a funding crisis. Tanzania hosts over 359,000 displaced people, including refugees and asylum seekers. 
Edward Ibani Rakeza is one of tens of thousands of Burundian refugees who live at the Nduta camp in northwestern Tanzania. The family came here a year ago, having fled political violence at home. Like most people at the camp, they still live in emergency shelters that are meant to house new arrivals for a short period. The refugees have been forced to live in tents that provide little comfort, privacy or security because the UN Refugee Agency doesn't have enough funds to move people to more solid structures. According to the UN Refugee Agency, more than 400,000 Burundians have fled since the political crisis began in April 2015. It was sparked when President Pierre Nkuruziza decided to run for a third term, which he secured in a disputed election in July 2015. Many of those fleeing Burundi have gone to Tanzania, while others are in Rwanda, Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm worried that the tents may harm us in one way or another. It is very hot inside and there are no rooms in it. A grown-up like me has no privacy. Unduta camp houses about 125,000 refugees and 34% of households here live in transitional shelters. The UNHCR is working to move people out of emergency shelters by providing refugees with tools and materials to build their own homes through a community-based program. Under this upgradable shelter project, emergency shelters can be encased by mud bricks and upgraded into semi-permanent structures with a corrugated iron roof. Each shelter built under the program costs 50% less than full construction of a transitional shelter which means funds can be used to meet other important needs such as health care, education and livelihoods. Since April 2017, the number of households living in transitional shelters there has increased by 13%. Once they move into it, once they've settled in, they can slowly start producing the bricks, mud bricks, and constructing around it to upgrade it to a semi-permanent or transitional shelter for that matter. So it shortens the time period that uh, refugees have to stay in these tents and uh, emergency shelters. In Yarugusu camp, only 6,159 households have access to the mud brick shelters. Sandrine Yaribagiza and her family have been living in an emergency shelter for five months now. Her husband has gone to hospital for a checkup after complaining of stomach cramps and the flu. Sandrine says she thought she was safe after fleeing the Democratic Republic of Congo, but now, in an overcrowded mass shelter, only designed to accommodate new arrivals for a week, she fears for her family every night. We are very unsettled living here. The children get sick every day because of the conditions we live in. We sleep in very poor conditions. The UNHCR and its partners are planning to build some 18,000 sun-dried mud brick transitional shelters with metal roofs in the country by the end of the year. This is still only 38% of what's needed.